Investigators are trying to determine if Lubitz's mental state played a part in the crash. And with more on how to better detect mental health issues and take the stigma out of discussing them, we're joined by Dr. Jenny Klein in New York City. She is a clinical social worker and a therapist. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. It's a tragic thing. It is. And, you know, Dr. Klein, Germany has strict patient privacy laws. This is something we've been hearing about a lot. Should governments require mental health screenings in regards to certain professions? And should those results be reported to the employers? Mental health screeners for whom? Well, you know, let's start, let's start with pilots, but, you know, it can get, we can go from pilots to, you know, bus drivers or all sorts of various uh, em, em, employees. Well, it depends on the quality of the screening and the danger of the, uh, the occupation that they're looking at. Because if you have a screener who doesn't hear the internal issues of a person but just gets an impression, it's not going to be very helpful. Well, how accurate are mental health screenings? You know, is it easy to hide certain conditions during a test? You know, it seems like, you know, no one felt the need to alert authorities about this specific pilot with German wings. Well, it doesn't seem that the screeners were able to detect the problem and that with this youngster. And if they had any information from his psychiatrist that he was suicidal, uh, confidentiality put aside, that doctor should have realized that this boy in a plane as a co-pilot is a danger to himself and others. And he sh they should have alerted the airline. Confidentiality put aside this time. But screenings and privacy laws differ so much from state to state, from country to country. So. What should happen when something like this crosses borders and international lines? The individuals, you have laws, but individuals apply what their common sense tells them is a danger to others and to the young man himself. Individuals have to have the knowledge to be able to detect what is going to cause this kind of tragedy and alert the people that he should not be working in an airline. Dr. Even Clark, if it's, yes, go Sorry, ahead. go ahead. If, if, if we can hear the internal dynamics of a person, and we know that instead of hating themselves, they're going to take 154 people with, with them. He was suicidal before. So he didn't kill himself, but he waited until he could lock the pilot out and kill 154 with himself. That means he, he, was not, he was not detected until all these people died. And yet the, whoever treated him knew that he should not be in that kind of position because he was dangerous. Dr. Klein, why are people still so reluctant to get help? Obviously, you know, we've been hearing that this young man um, was not wanting to get more help than he was. Are there certain regions or countries where talking about mental illness is still taboo? Well, it depends upon who's listening. If we want to judge people because they're mentally ill, we put them in a very black category then there's no hope for anyone because what we're going to do is saying, if I have a problem, instead of trying to understand the problem and get the help, we just push them away. And we think all the people who go for mental health counseling, there must be something wrong with them. And, and you know, we put people in a black box or a white box. They're okay and they're perfect or they're a danger. We don't want anything to do with them. This is not, everybody has internal conflicts. Very few people are told that when we're small, we imagine power we don't have. And in that imagination, we can make ourselves perfect, we can fly, and the whole thing descends into an unconscious mind, which is 90% of our brain. It's not taught. I teach it on my, my, my programs all the time. In other words, I can create as a child a hundred percent powerful person and then hate myself for not achieving it. 
And that's unconscious. That's 90% of your brain. 10% of your brain is conscious, but you don't know where that feeling of killing myself, who's killing who. My 100% doesn't like me if I'm only 98 or 99. So the self-hate, which is very painful, gets projected to others as well as this boy who wanted to kill himself. He didn't kill himself. He killed 154 other people with himself. It's tragic that we don't understand how the mind is working. And people who screen people for jobs, they're not taught that. I teach it on—I've been teaching on 500 shows I've been doing, just because I want the world to kind of understand what has been passed down to me by, by other other people in my profession who has said, we have an idealized image that we imagine. We can't reach it. Instead of hating ourselves, sometimes we do, we kill ourselves, or we kill others. All right, Dr. Jenny Klein, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much okay. for joining us from Thanks New York. Thanks for having me.